If you are looking for a full-size SUV that is best described as having a comfortable ride quality and quiet interior, the climate control system is impressive. That's not something you hear every day about any vehicle. The optional 6.2 liter V8 makes plenty of horsepower and there is generous cargo capacity. Well, the 2023 GMC Yukon AT4 may be what you are looking for. And what's new for 2023? The Yukon Denali Ultimate package is now the top tier trim level. So let's see if we can answer the question in today's video. Is this 2023 GMC Yukon AT4 a better option for a luxury full-size SUV than the Chevrolet Suburban? The exterior color on this Yukon is sterling metallic. That's accented by a jet black interior and being that this is the AT4, besides the jet black interior, you will see it will have the Kalahari inserts that really provide a nice contrast throughout the interior. The piping looks really nice and then the area right here that just really sets things apart, not only in the front, but also in the rear as well, just to give you a quick look at what we have here. And I'm going to reach in here. We're going to hit the button for the ignition. We're going to turn on the hazard lights and the lighting around the vehicle. What exactly do we have? LED headlights, LED daytime running lights. Basically, every light on this vehicle is LED. Now, I didn't turn the fog lights on but as you can see they are there and you're going to notice a little bit of a different look here with the front grill because well it's the AT4 so you're going to have a little bit of chrome a little bit of a different look in different areas the red recovery hooks down there for when you're pulling the Suburbans and the Expeditions and maybe even the Land Rover Defender 130s out of the mud that's right when they get stuck out there 275 60 tires wrapped around the 20 inch AT4 wheels. A very nice look. They're going to have that GMC on the center cap right there. AT4 logo here on both sides, obviously. And then you're going to have your power side view mirrors with turn signal indicators built in. And one of my favorite features here, the power side steps that just make getting in and out so much easier. When any door is opened, that's going to come out and let you see. It's kind of nice that it has, well, just a little bit of a delay there in case somebody says, oh, wait a minute, I need to jump back out or jump back in real quick. And it has that delay before it goes back in. Also, passive entry at all four doors. For you busy parents out there, this is a big benefit. Why is it a big benefit? Because you can unlock all four doors from the rear doors on both sides. This is on both sides, not just here on the passenger side. And if you find out that's not working when you push that button and you say to yourself, well, why isn't that happening the way I want it to? You can change the setting within the infotainment screen. It had the black roof rails and quite a bit of black trim around the vehicle. Also, something I really like here that GMC has done that really cleans up the rear of the vehicle. Notice there's no rear window wiper, at least no exposed rear window wiper. That's because it's neatly tucked away within the rear roof spoiler right there. It just gives it a cleaner look. If you're comparing this to say a BMW of some sort, an X5 or something like that, an X7 even, which would be a little more closer to this, you'll find out that BMW doesn't hide away their rear window wipers. All right, guys, I mentioned that you have that powerful 6.2 liter V8 that is available. That one makes 420 horsepower and 460 pounds feet of torque. In this particular case, we have the 5.3 liter V8. It makes 355 horsepower and 355 foot pounds of torque, mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission. This is a four wheel drive vehicle. And how about those all important MPGs? 15 city, 20 on the highway, 17 combined. And according to GMC, you should use 5.9 gallons of gas for every 100 miles you drive this Yukon if you're good with your right foot. And to bring that home a little bit better and make it a little bit easier to understand, this Yukon has a 24 gallon gas tank that'll help make things a little bit easier to understand. Cargo capacity comes in at 25.5 up to a maximized 122.9 cubic feet. And this is a hands-free tailgate, as you can see, making things very easy. You're going to find a lot of space back here, including right here under the rear floor. And the thing I like about this is how you can just put that floor up like that and it stays out of the way. 
If you need to gain access to the tools you have to change a tire, there is everything right there. And you've got additional space right here, and you just kind of pull forward just a little bit on that, and it goes back in place. Now, if you want to maximize cargo capacity, well, before we talk about that, let's show this connectivity back here. You have the household power outlet right there. But all you have to do, you can see the L and the R. So it tells you which is which. Let's see if I can give you a good shot of that. You're going to have to hold that down. We're going to let that go down. But here's the thing I like about this. These go down very quickly. Now, you also have the buttons right here for the middle row seats. Now, there is a little bit of a difference here, just so you know. Notice there's no up arrow on these for the middle row seats, only the up and down function here with the power rear seat. So just so you can see, I am going to go ahead and lower those seats down right there. We'll go ahead and lower down this other seat. There it goes. It's a little bit too far forward, but that's okay. But here's something I really like. When you go to raise the seats back up here in the rear, the power seats, watch how quickly they come up. There are a lot of far more expensive SUVs out there that don't come up, come up nearly that quickly. And if you happen to have trouble having that rear power lift gate work, doing exactly what I showed you to do earlier, and it won't open no matter what you do, come and check this switch right here. It's probably set to off. You can set it to full, to three-fourths, or to off. So if you have any trouble getting it to open, that is the very first thing I would check. For those of you who may say, what does the remote look like? Well, there is the remote. It has remote start. You can open that power rear lift gate right there and even close it again, lock and unlock, and the panic button for when those crazy people start chasing you because they want to take a good close look at your Yukon, but you're saying to yourself, I don't want you to do that. So I'm going to show you what we've got here. Let's move this seat back up into place and I'll show you here, if you want to move these seats back and forth, this is what you use. Let me see if I can move that back. It's kind of hard to do one-handed, but you can see the difference between this passenger side seat over there and this one right here. That increases the rear seat leg room for your passengers. That's nice to know. And look at how easy that is to do. I did that one-handed, no big deal. So let me go ahead and hop into the back seat here and obviously there are going to be some variations, but the seat obviously moves back and forth. It's still pretty far forward right there that you can see what I have as far as my leg space goes. You're going to have connectivity for your rear seat passengers back here in the way of that USB port right there. And a couple of options, one for a drink holder right here, and I guess technically you could use that as a drink holder for a square box of some sort, square drink or something like that but really the snacks can go right there. And it's just very plentiful as far as space goes back here. I like the fact that everybody has their own air conditioning vents. There are also reading lights back here. And if somebody jumps out in the middle row seats, even though there is a pass-through, if somebody doesn't want to use that pass-through, well, all you have to do if you're the rear seat passenger is click or pull on that latch right there and everything goes forward. By the way, if you're curious to know what does it look like or what is it like leg space wise when the seats are all the way back, well, there you go. I could live with this for a little while, but not on a long road trip, but not a big deal because this is the driver. You won't be sitting back here. But what will your rear seat passengers enjoy besides what I've shown you so far? That panoramic sunroof. What a nice view you definitely have for the middle and the rear seat passengers, especially rear seat when it comes to the overall look and view from that panoramic sunroof. And as you can see, we've got more of that Kalahari, the contrast stitching right there. It's in a couple of different places, as well as the upper and the lower door bins. A lot of space back here for rear seat passengers in the middle row, map pockets right there, and here are the controls for that third zone of climate. You have tri-zone climate control, so you're gonna have all of the controls here for the third zone you can turn those on or off depending on what the situation is. There are also heated seats back here. Heated only, but it is there and you've got some connectivity options also. And then built-in armrests for both of these what amount to basically captain's seats or captain's chairs. Pretty comfortable back here, I must say, especially with that armrest. But the main thing I know a lot of you would like to know about, what are you going to find in the front seat, especially if you're the driver? And looking from the passenger side to the front seat area, again, you have nice large door bins, upper and lower, or the contrast stitching there. 
and the AT4 logo there on the door sill. Power driver and passenger seats, that's always a good thing, obviously. And then you're going to find quite a bit of space within the gloveless glove box. It's called a glove box, but I rarely find gloves there. In fact, I've only found gloves there one time. <laughs> Not sure what all you can find right here, but whatever you can fit is what you can put right there. A lot of different options throughout the interior as far as your storage capacity and space goes. And then you'll find a few extra features here on the driver's side door, including seat memory, the controls for the mirrors. In fact, let's close that real fast just so I can show you that you do have the power folding side view mirrors. I'm pushing on this button right here. That's how I fold those mirrors in. And there is an option within the infotainment screen so that as you walk away from the vehicle, that will happen. It will lock and all that good stuff. You're also gonna find all the controls here, not only for a lot of those great safety features, lane keep assist, you've got uh, the park assist, all that stuff, traction control, it's all here. There's your power parking brake. The controls right here for the heads up display, which may be kind of hard to see because it's so bright outside today, but you know it's there. And your driving modes and all the functionality for the lights around the vehicle, in and around the vehicle. Let's go through our driving modes real quick. We've got sport, off road. We're going to keep going here through tow haul mode. And obviously, you're going to have normal as well and off road. And take a look over here. I like the graphics here. You're going to see well, the name basically change and a little bit of the surface that the vehicle is on. There is your Yukon right there. And then you have, if you're directionally challenged, well, there you go. You've got a compass. It's going to tell you which direction you're going. And you can go through quite a bit here with the steering wheel mounted controls over here on the left hand side. Here's everything for adaptive cruise control. And then we have, let's do this. Let's show you how quickly the shade, the power shade for your panoramic sunroof closes because that will actually make it a little bit easier for us to see everything here. Something that I know some people find a bit controversial. Tell me what you think down in the comment section. Do you like the push button shifter or would you like to see a column shifter or maybe the shifter that we see in the trucks that's right here. Everybody has their preferences, I know. Now one thing, while I'm thinking about it, let me cover it here. You might say to yourself, well, there's no place up there to put my sunglasses when I don't need them. You're right, it's not there. It's actually moved right here. That's what this little area is right here. That's your sunglass holder. And there is your button for the hazard lights. Now quite a bit going on here within the infotainment screen. A lot of great features, a lot of great functionality, very easy to use, very easy to learn. And obviously you have Google Assistant here. And Google Assistant works through voice commands, a lot of different voice commands, not only for navigation, which I'm not gonna go in and change all of that because the owner of this vehicle may not like that. They probably wanna do it themselves. I'll let them do it because this is a pre-purchased vehicle. But if you're having a bad day and you need a laugh, well, here's what you can do. Hey Google, tell me a joke. What do you call a belt made of watches? A waste of time. Yep, I can hear the courtesy laughs. That's about as good as you can do on that one, right? And the cameras, boy, I tell you what, camera views everywhere, all over the vehicle. You've got your overhead 360 degree view. You've also got the front camera. Obviously, you have a whole lot of different features within the camera system here. I'll show you the different views here. And notice what I did right there. You want to change the view, push that a second time. Some of these views will do that for you. And then you have the trajectory lines right there. There is quite a bit here, more than I probably have time to show every single little thing, but it is all here. Here is your dual zone climate control. I talked about that. Dual zone in the front, single zone in the rear. And then you have heated seats right here heated on the back, that's the cushion, that's the back right there, and then you're going to have your ventilated seats as well. Three different settings there, everything to control the air conditioning, and then your cup holders right here. And I like the fact that you have a nice, large, very large center console right here. The lid doubling as an armrest for the driver and the passenger, a little bit more space right here. 
and inside, I mean, space for miles. You've got the removable tray. If you don't like that, well, you can just take that and throw it aside. You also have a ton of space in here, a couple more connectivity options, depending on your situation and what you want, as well as a light built in to that console right there. There's a lot going on within the interior here. I'll definitely say that almost to the point to where if we wanted to do an interior only or maybe an infotainment screen only video, we could. Tell me down in the comments if that's something you would like to see. All right, guys, we're going to hop out on the road for our test drive. Now, you do have the auto stop start system here, but you can turn that off if you want to. That's pretty easy to do. No big deal. That's via the buttons down here. So you'll find that also you have a power adjustable tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. So if you're wondering about that, that is here too. Unfortunately, it's kind of hard to show the heads up display on a bright sunny day like this, but it's a nice, large, easily configurable display that offers a lot of great information. So if you're somebody that maybe your family is on the grow and you're saying to yourself, well, I don't know if, if the wife's going to adjust or, or even I'm going to adjust the driver, whoever it may be, uh, to the size of the vehicle, how easy is that to do? Well, here's the thing about that. Number one, with all those camera views, you're always going to be able to see what's going on around you. And, and unlike in years past, some of these vehicles, you had to be in reverse to use those cameras. Not anymore, as I already showed you on the infotainment screen, within the infotainment screen, you can push that option that says camera and it allows you to see all of the different camera views and you are in good shape. And with multiple engine options available, well, depending on what you want, well, you can get that under the hood. This is a very enjoyable vehicle to drive, a nice smooth ride quality and its on-road managers are really good manners. Let me say that without any stutters or issues there. Um, manners. And check this out. Nice Range Rover driver right here. Kind enough to give me room to get out of here. I really appreciate that. So got to give them a wave as we go by. I really appreciate that. That was kind of them. You don't always get that kind of thing. So anyway, good on-road manners before I was distracted for a change by a good driver. It's usually a bad driver. But very comfortable, very enjoyable to drive. It is nice and roomy. There is so much space within the interior. And another option I didn't mention or feature that is here, that is an option, is the seat that will vibrate when there's something around you that you need to know about. It will let you know which side it's on based on that vibration. It's kind of the ultimate seat of the pants experience, if you will. And I'm going to tell you what, there is plenty of power under your foot. Even though this isn't the most powerful version, it still gets the job done. So depending on what you're looking for, well, these Yukons definitely have a little bit of everything for everybody. Plenty of space, plenty of power, plenty of technology, a lot of great safety features. What's not to like here? Tell me what you think about the differences. Would you rather have this Yukon or would you rather buy a Suburban? So tell me down in the comments section, is the 2023 GMC Yukon AT4 a better option for a luxury SUV than the 2023 Chevrolet Suburban? Tell me what you think and tell me why you answered the way that you did. And gotta say a special thanks to the owner of this Yukon for loaning me the remote for the day so I could show it to you. Well, the remote and the vehicle, because we did do both, right? And a special thanks to all of you who were kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn about other models you may wish to purchase, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I'll see you there.